Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about cancel culture. I've seen some recent videos um, of Piers Morgan championing his new show, where he, um, he claims that he is going to cancel cancel culture. Now, I don't, there's literally very little that I agree with Piers Morgan on, but on this one, I'm with him. Obviously, Piers Morgan, um, it happened to him where he was cancelled. I don't know if Piers Morgan knows, but cancel culture isn't only affecting outspoken um, TV presenters. It's, um, it's happening to normal people. It happened to me. And um, my word, brace yourselves. You are going to be disgusted with what I about to tell you but first of all let's have a look at these clips from Piers Morgan um, hailing himself as the um, he's gonna single-handedly cancel 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 culture um, and yeah this this coincided with um, well I'm planning to tell my story so let's have a look at the clip from Piers Morgan and then I will Go into more details about what happened to me and has probably happened to many, many working class um, in working class English people or British people. Um, you know, this um, this this left wing liberal white guilt and um, what are the other this critical race theory. It's um, it's uh, it, it only seems to be. Um, The indigenous people, basically, who are getting, um, you know, getting cancelled. And it's happening to the working class. Let's have a look at what Piers Morgan has to say on these clips. I found um, one, one's, uh, I think one is speaking on Sky News Australia. And that's very based, completely different to the Sky News in the UK. And um, and on and in America, there seems to be, um, yeah... It's, uh, I don't know about America, but Australia seems to have a lot more freedom of speech. But of course, um, yes, we all know what happened in Australia in the last couple of years. They've had their freedoms taken away, even, even more so than in this country. We were talking last night. You are utterly confident that if we take this head on, mm. we can beat the woke world. Well, look, we're supposed to live in democracies. Australia, America, the UK... We are supposed to be the great democracies of the world. There's something democratic about this woke can cancel culture mm -hmm. madness that's going on, where you have a group, a small group of people who've just taken it upon themselves that they're going to dictate to the rest of us how we lead our lives, what we're going to find funny, mm -hmm. what statues we're going to admire or not, uh, what we're going to wear, what we're going to look like, how we're going to talk, how we're going to think. And this is a kind of fascist illiberal liberalism mm -hmm. at large. And I, I've been watching this happening for the last few years, thinking this is complete madness. Who's going to stop this? And I've decided it's going to be me. <laughs> so I'm going to cancel the cancel culture. I'm going to take these ultra-woke lunatics on head-on. And I'm going to point out to them that in a democracy, it's not about the right to have a freedom of speech where only your view mm. is the acceptable one. And anyone who doesn't have that view has to be uh, shamed and vilified and then cancelled. Actually, what freedom of speech means is listening to somebody who's a, whose views are completely opposite to yours, but respecting their right to have a different opinion, and at the end of it, in good Aussie or Brit style, go and have a beer with someone that who totally disagrees with you about everything. Because that's actually what a democratic society should be about. It's not about one view being the only view that's allowed. And, look, you and I, I'm sure, would disagree about a number of things. Sure we would. But it doesn't mean we can't well, we be... we can be civil. doesn't mean we can't be friends. doesn't mean we can't have a good debate. doesn't mean we can't argue the points and agree and disagree about certain things. And then we can walk away and have a glass of wine or a, or a beer. That is what I would like to see society go back to. I think the, the, the sort of woke, fascist illiberalism has been incredibly damaging to society. It's made people not want to say what they think, not to speak their own minds, mm. not to give opinions. And I'm very opinionated, and I don't intend to stop. Uh, but I'm not ordering you to have my opinion. Mm. If you don't agree with me, well, tell me. Let's have the debate. Let's try and work it out. Maybe, maybe 
I'll change my mind occasionally. My viewers are now waiting with bated breath to think. Uh, authoritarian instinct. You're talking about Justin Trudeau up in Canada, the Freedom Convoy. Well, he, Justin Talk Trudeau, I, about that. I've been on his case for years. This is a guy who actually said we can't use the word mankind anymore because it's offensive, <laughs> because it has the word man in it. I didn't like to tell him the word woman has the word man in it, because <laughs> that would have been too complicated for his woke brain. But Justin Trudeau is the kind of king of wokedom. You know, if, if Meghan Markle's the queen, he's the king. <laughs> and he's been caught here in a, in a trap of his own devices, where he has no idea how to lead his country through what is ostensibly a peaceful protest by people who have a legitimate cause. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of what they're saying, but I absolutely defend to the death their right to protest in the way that they've been doing. And I think that Trudeau, by bringing emergency powers and having the police rounding them all up like it's some, you know, fascist state, this is what I'm talking about. This is a form of fascism going on. And yet he would profess to be the most liberal guy you'd ever meet in your life. And yet he's behaving like a fascist. And this is what I mean about the hypocrisy of the woke movement, if you like, the woke brigade, is that they, they say one thing, they say they stand for tolerance and fairness and equality and uh, liberalism, and they behave in a completely different manner. And I find that in, in what's happening in Canada, these are shocking scenes. Yes. This should not be happening. And if you go and talk to Canadians now, it's not just the, the Conservative right who are complaining about this. A lot of people on the left are saying, this is ridiculous. How can this be happening in our country? And this is what happens when you have a very woke leader who doesn't understand actually how to govern a country properly. And it's, it's, in, it's, it's I think it's a, a, a shambles to watch. Well, I look forward to, I think we all look forward to hearing your point of view on that show, on Fox Nation, on these issues. And before we lose you today, let's also talk about the news of the day. Um, yeah. We just saw at the beginning of uh, this segment, Trey Yinks from Ukraine. Look. So there we have it. Piers Morgan, who considers himself as a left-leaning liberal, is calling out neoliberalism. He's also calling out Justin Trudeau and um, finally I've found something I can agree with Piers Morgan on. Now um, what happens, um, my story, I got sacked um, on October 7th. <clears throat> numerous, numerous smoke screens from the company. Um, I appealed it and told it was my final appeal. Then when I um, went to the next stage, ACAS, no, where they mediate, they call it, um, I forget what they call it now. It's it's basically mediating, uh, early conciliation, that's it. You get in touch with ACAS, they basically mediate with the employer to see if they can come to some sort of agreement with, uh, with regards to a financial compensation or reinstatement of your job. Um, then all of a sudden there was um, panic in saying, oh, you've, you've, you've got another appeal, a final appeal, after they told me that it was the end of the line with GIST, or at least one manager did. Um, I don't think they thought I would take it further, but further I am taking it. And um, right up until, uh, right up to the um, dragging them through the cause, which is happening. See, what happened with me is um, somebody had sent in, and I know who the person is, by the way, um, they have admitted it in live chats on, on YouTube. Um, this person runs a website claiming, it, uh, co I think they, they call it the free speech, free speech website. It's <laughs> free speech, really. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so all, all them details will be um, exposed in a documentary that I'm going to make. And I am going to give the company a right of reply. You see, this, this complaint that came in, the company, I got a phone call saying, um, you need, uh, you come in and basically they said we're suspending you on full pay pending investigation and then the um the complaint that was sent in the company agreed that the complaint was a load of hogwash they'd took videos from my youtube channel and sent it to the employer with a description um of the video and then when you played the videos it clearly wasn't what they was describing it as company agreed to that the um, company, um, the, well, the manager, the manager in charge of it. Um, yes, we will expose who that is. Um, because I've, I've noticed some football forums from Barnsley Football Club are saying whatever happened to this player. We will tell you what happened to the player in the, in the documentary. 
Um, this is all going to come after the legal action has uh, been completed, of course. Um, so can't really go in much detail, name the company, etc. until that is concluded. But I will tell you the management, um, they was focusing on one video. The video was actually about 12 months old. It, had, um, it was very early on in this channel when I started putting out footage, so it didn't have many views at all. And the footage was me <clears throat> criticising the um, policy. Um, Sadiq Khan, if you remember, it was, a, it was a, shortly after Black Lives Matter had hit London. Sadiq Khan came up with the policy um, that was adopted. Of course, he's the highest commissioner of the Metro the mayor of London is the highest commissioner of the Metropolitan Police. And their new recruitment policy was that at least 40% of all new recruits must be from BAME background. So that's basically basing jobs on colour. We all know BAME basically means someone who's not white. So 40% of all new recruits must be BAME. So I produced a video criticising this policy, saying you're not basing jobs on the... You know, this, this is going to... This this is going to meet... Uh, this is, this is going to stop the... Um, best people getting the jobs now i'm not saying the best people are white uh, but it is going to have an effect on who gets them jobs the job the policy should be just not based on color the, le the liberal left have always argued that um jobs should not be based on skin color and then you hear, here you had this policy sadiq khan 40 percent of all new recruits to the metropolitan police must be bame not white um, so my argument was, you know, this is I was criticising this um, this policy, I was criticising Black Lives Matter, and um, yeah, it was a very mild common sense video, but um, the company said, mm, me producing a vid video criticising what is clearly a racist recruitment policy is racist, in their eyes. And I said, well, no, this is this is a video based on facts. This is a fact video, video based on facts. The management reply was, well, our policy is even if it's based on facts, but could be seen as offensive by anyone in the world, then that is a sackable offence. That's in the workplace. But this was a video produced in my own time on my YouTube channel. The result was they sacked me. The reason for sacked, being sacked was bringing the company into disrepute. How can me doing a video on my YouTube channel bring the company in disrepute? The company was never mentioned. I've never mentioned the company on this channel or any channel or anywhere online. I don't, <laughs> I don't want people knowing where I work because, um, yeah, you have people. Somehow this person found out, but this... We'll go into the details of how he found out um, where I worked because this person had also found out where I lived and published that everywhere. I will mention the union though. The union in that workplace is Unite the Union. And um, there was no help whatsoever. I was never ever going to be a member of that union um, because I know what they stand for. Um, but in the... Uh, I will say in the final appeal, which was chaired by an independent body, somebody from ACAS, we got to the nooks and crooks of it. The manager at the depot that I worked at said that he doesn't agree with my political beliefs. He said, um, I wouldn't necessarily have been sacked, but I showed no remorse and didn't see what I'd done and was wrong. So for that reason, he saw no other reason than to sack me. And I don't regret that. I will never apologise because it was clearly not wrong to do a video in my own time on my YouTube channel. You never, ever apologise to the um, raging liberal left. Well, the, the neoliberal left, the, um, the left as we saw, Piers Morgan, who considers himself as a left-leaning liberal, really doesn't agree with this neoliberalism. Neoliberal, neo um so we had an admission there that, um, yeah, he wouldn't have been sacked had he apologised. 
he didn't see what he'd done was wrong, so that's why we sacked him. Um, sacked for having an opinion, and um, clearly sacked. There's, there's definitely an anti-white agenda at this company. Unite the Union in that final appeal. The, I mean, the, the shop stewards at the company was told they couldn't help me. Um, the union wouldn't allow them to help me during the um, investigation period. So um, I was left on my own to fight the battle. And the um, representative, a regional organiser from Unite the Union in that final appeal, he was more interested in having a debate. And he said that um, what was my issue with Sadiq Khan's policy of having 40% of all new recruits must be BAME. So, of course, I told him, well, that's basing jobs on skin colour. Surely your union's against basing jobs on skin colour. And he was like, I'd like to have a debate with you actually on this because I think it's a bloody good, a really good, really good policy. So, yeah. And Unite, the union are heavily involved at this workplace and um, this policy that they've, uh, the, they've got in, in the workplace where anyone who says anything that could be seen as offensive by management is a sackable offence is um, something that's... Uh, well, actually... That isn't the policy. The policy is you can't say anything um, that could be seen as offensive in the workplace. It doesn't say it's a sackable offence, but um, and it doesn't, it certainly does not. Um, the, the contract I had, it certainly says nothing about this. It says nothing about you having freedom of speech to say what you want on a YouTube channel. The company was never mentioned, so they have not got a leg to stand on, in my opinion. Also, the um, human rights article, human rights that still exists even after Brexit, the European Union human rights, Article 14 has clearly in the print that it is illegal to discriminate against somebody for their political beliefs. And in the final appeal, we got to the nux of it. The manager sacked me because he doesn't agree with my political beliefs. And he said that. So we've got an admission there that they've broken Article 14 of the Human Rights Act. And I'll do some more digging. I'm sure there's more things in the Equalities Act. So if you're a manager from that company watching this video, you know full well what's coming. And when the time's right, I will be producing a documentary explaining everything in far more detail who the company is, um, what's going on at that company, the anti-white agenda that's going on, clearly going on at that company, and it's clearly supported by Unite the Union. Um, when the time's right, um, when all the action has been final finalised, I will do the documentary, and I will give the company the right of reply. So, if you haven't already subscribed, and you want to know what uh, you're interested in what's going to be disclosed in the documentary, then subscribe and share this video.